Well hello gamers and coders alike. This is going to be a quick tutorial on how to write a trainer, if you will, for your PC games. Uh, just a fun little C-sharp program. Uh, let's just jump right in and make a new project. I'm going to be using, uh, let's just see, we need a Windows form. I'm going to be using Final Fantasy X-2. It's kind of a crappy game, but whatever. It was my last project I was working on. Uh, this, would, this can work for any game though. Um, I'm just going to call this Eh, FFX2, whoop, too many Fs, demo, whatever, I don't need a name, uh, I'll be throwing this out anyway, I already have one. So, essentially I think I'm going to be doing this in three parts, because the first thing we need to write is a little class to read memory, <clears throat> and it's going to be a reusable class, so you guys can put it in a library, or do whatever you want, I'm going to do it the stupid coder way, and just add it right to my project, um, so I'm going to make a new folder for it, if I can remember where add is, there it is. I'm just going to call it utilities. It doesn't really matter, I guess. It's not going to be too organized anyway. Um, I'm going to add a class. So I'll just show you guys how to write this class. It's going to be pretty boring, this first part, which you know, basically going to be copy-paste what I'm doing, because um, that's not really what the tutorial is about. The rest of it will be finding the memory and injecting it and doing all that fun stuff. But for now, we didn't make uh, this process memory reader class, I guess I'll call it. Uh, I found a post about this years ago from MSDN, um, and I'll just kind of, actually I have half of it, let's see, in the background here, oh, where did my window go? Oh, hi Ming, it's right here. We're going to copy this in, um, this first part, maybe I'll link to a paste bin, but essentially it's using all these DLL imports uh, in one little enum. This is all from MSDN, even has some comments in here. Uh, obviously this isn't going to work, so right-click it, go to Actions, you need to be using the Runtime Interrupt Service. Uh, that'll fix that. But basically, um, we just need a couple of these DLL processes, or these, uh, sorry, methods, write, read. Uh, we need to open and close the process. We probably won't actually even use the close handle. Um, we'll just leave it open. I'm just going to do it the bad coder way. It doesn't really matter. It's it's pretty easy to close it if you want to, and you'll figure it out. But I'm going to minify this. I don't know. Maybe I'll leave it on the screen. You can pause it if you want to copy it, but likely I'll just do a paste bin because it's a lot easier. The rest of it we have to write. That was just importing the necessary DLLs to um, create this little, little class that we need. Uh, so, let me just public... Okay, so first thing we need is a process, and that is not uh, diagnostics. Okay, we need that first. All right, so we need a process to read from. This class is just going to hang on to a process that we're reading. Um, I guess we could make this static, really, for the trainer's purposes. But then again, if this is going to be a library, I guess we should leave it uh, instance-based. Uh, so let's see. We're just gonna, you know what? We're gonna make this public, so I'm just going to use prop and hit tab twice, and then I get my nice little snippet here, it comes with Visual Studio, you just call this process again, maybe I'll give it read process, it's kind of a goofy name, but whatever, um, now we need a handle for that, so I'm going to make a private, uh, I think it's an int, and pointer, int, uh, I'll just call it the handle. Whatever. Okay. Um, next, we're going to need to write the open process method. So, public void open process. And since we'll already have this assigned up here, we don't need to pass in any arguments. We're just going to need to call open process here that we're importing and it's going to tell us what we need so I'm just going to minimize that because that's all ugly and hard to read um, so what is this class I call it? A process memory? oh I wish I could rename that actually maybe I should but no no uh, open process so desired access right so this is where we have to use this enum on top we have to make these are all flags um, as you can see, I don't know, if you're familiar with hex and flags, this should look familiar, but if you're not, that's okay, it doesn't matter. Pretty much what we're going to do is pass it a list of these, 
of what we want. We're going to need read, write, and like two other things. And they add together, so I'll just write that real quick. I'll show you. Uh, let's see. I have to make that enum. Access. There it is. I'll call this access equals, and this is where we do a lot of fun stuff. So, first thing we're going to need is going to be the query information. Don't know if limited is the one we want or not. We'll find out. And now we just, instead of concatenating all this together, we're doing an or bit operation. I might get this on a new line. Um, process me memory type. Next thing we're going to need is VM read and write. So, VM read. Uh, be consistent here. Or, do another one. And then write. And I think one more. We're going to need, uh, yes, operation. Looking at a little cheat sheet I wrote here. So I haven't had to rewrite this in years. Uh, VM operation. So there's our access. Pretty much adds all of these together uh, by ORs uh, to the... Well, it's going to be a uint when it passes in here, it looks like. Or what does it want? Yeah, uint. So we're going to have to cast that. First thing we need is that access, but we have to cast it as a uint. And there, next thing at once is the inherit handle. That would be this guy, but we didn't assign it yet. Hmm. Well, I guess. Well, no, this is hard coded. One. This is always going to be a one. Wait a minute. This doesn't make sense. Sure it does. Process ID. That comes from the process itself. Ah, okay. So we already have that. Well. We'll assign this outside in the code, so we're going to just pass it in here. That's the hard part about trying to follow this logically, is what we're doing. Uh, read process dot id. It's assigned by Windows. Um, oh, we have to cast that, because what does it want? Uint. Silly, silly Windows. Just got to cast all that stuff. Alright, so that's going to open our process. It, it returns a pointer. Um, that's what we're assigning the handle. I had that all backwards. Now it makes sense. Uh, what are you returning? Oh, in pointer. Sorry. Aha! I thought that was a good pointer. Change this type to in pointer. We have private variable. Alright. So now we'll have the in pointer handle of the process that we uh, pass in, which we'll need for the other methods. Uh, and that's all we need to do to open this one. I'm not going to put any try catches or error handling on this. Um, I'm going to let the client do that. So, I mean, you can't really log it out to something. You could if you want, but uh, I'm not going to pop up a message box. You don't know if we're going to be on a Windows form and whatnot. Um, I guess we can write the close handle. We don't really need it, but I'm going to do it just because it's so quick. Uh, just a private or a public void close handle. Nothing to pass in. All we're doing is telling that API close handle and it wants the handle that we made our private what is it returning to us oh yeah the return value it uses a silly int return value shall I just yeah call it return value <laughs> uh, yeah I guess we can do some it's supposed to be a zero if it's not zero something went wrong but I'm not going to well I don't know we can just like throw exception or something I guess Closing handle failed. Something stupid for now, but whatever. We don't need that one. Um, the only other n two methods we need to write are the read process and write process. Um, for the gaming trainer, we'll probably only use the write process, but there's going to be plenty of times you're going to need read memory too, or just some interesting stuff. Um, like I'm playing Final Fantasy X 2, it's got like game percentage and you can just read that right out of the game it doesn't usually tell you that until you save the game or something but you can read it right out stuff like that or maybe your cheats that you need to write you need to read some other value first well you know what since since I don't know how well this video quality is going to be I'm just going to zoom in so everybody can see easier uh, should have thought of that earlier sorry anyway let's write the uh, let's do read memory first so we're going to pass back an array of bytes because that's all memory is going to be. It's a bunch of bytes, and you have to interpret that. 
this one is going to require... Oh, I thought it would tell me what this one requires. Up here, this stuff. Oh, weird. I guess it doesn't. Oh man, now I zoomed in, it's harder to move around. Let me just collapse that again. I can't see what I'm doing. I'm blind because it's bigger. Alright. So, I know this is going to need in pointer for the memory address. Let's see where we're reading from. Uh, we're going to need a, a number for how many bytes to read. So we'll put that in there. And then also, as these old processes go, old DLL imports and stuff, they always have an out verbal on how many bytes it actually read. Seems kind of redundant, but there's times, I guess, where you could read less than what you passed in. Um, so maybe that's useful. I don't know. I don't ever use it, but we got to do it because of DLL import. Um, so let's make our buffer first. We're going to have as many bytes as we... Uh, we're going to be reading as many as we pass in, so what do we say? Byte... Ah, uh, let's rename that. Control RR, bytes to read. It's a good thing about coding live. Everybody can see your mistakes. Alright, so we get our array set up uh, to read into. Now, going to need this... Ah, I remember this part. Haha, <laughs> let me look at this quick bytes to read. This pissed me off. I remember I wrote this the first time. Yeah. This weird... Okay, so this... In my mind, this should be an integer. It should just tell you how many bytes it read, but no. It gives you a pointer to where that number is stored in memory, so annoyingly we have to deal with that. So <laughs> instead of just getting this nice number populated, we have to play with a pointer. So let's make it the uh, bytes read pointer. Or do we want to just put a P in front for pointer? I actually don't know what the correct one would be. And is there a zero? Yeah. Let's just set it blank for now. Or yeah, we'll just do blank. Uh, okay, so now let's do the actual reading. Let's get that read process memory. Now here we pass it all the fun stuff. So it wants the handle first. So we know that. It wants the base address, which we passed in for the memory address. The buffer is our buffer. That one's easy. Size, bytes to read. Uh-oh. It's going to run off the page here from all the big text here. All right, let's out the silly pointer for P bytes read. There. And this doesn't return anything, if I remember right. Oh, it does. It's some return code. I don't even think we'll... Let's not even bother with that. Uh, we could always try catch this and just not return anything, but um, so it's going to fill our buffer up with the memory. So that's done. All we need to do now is return it. But if we want to do something, I'll just show you quick. If we do want to use this bytes read, we have to turn it back into an integer. So bytes read. Uh, so I'm going to set our variable here, bytes read or read. Sorry, equals that pointer. And I'm going to change it to an int32. So there we go. That's how we get our actual value that comes back in a pointer from this silly thing. Um, but I'm not going to use it. Let's just I'm just showing you how to get it back to a normal normal integer. So now all we have to do is return that buffer. So now we have our read memory. No error handling, but that's all we need. Um, one more. We'll have to do the write memory method here. Public byte right memory and again I was hoping it would show this stuff but it doesn't I uh, guess I have notes on that I can check real quick pointer same thing um, where the memory address is uh, next it needs uh, oh, the, oh yeah of course our array of bytes that we're writing so let's we'll say bytes to write <laughs> I guess we'll give it a name like that and then again out it's giving us um, the number of bytes actually written. Bytes written. Mm. I guess. Eh, I kind of don't like that. I'll change that to something else, maybe. Alright. Uh, okay. Let's get our... Let's get, take care of that stupid end pointer thing again. We're going to make the P bytes written equals end pointer zero this, by the way, this is the same thing as going 
is casting a zero to end pointer. I just like using that because it's kind of um, nice native code or whatever. Just like using string dot empty instead of just a string you write as empty. Um, all right, so this one is just this easy write process memory. All right, so here's our handle, our base address, memory address, our buffer. Oh, we don't have buffer anymore. It's our bytes to write. Oh, maybe we should just call that buffer. Let's do that. Rename buffer. Okay, uh, size. Well, of course, the size is going to be the length of the buffer. I hate how they have to. They may always make you pass that in, but I guess that's for like when you have a larger block of memory and you only want to part it, you know, pass in like part of it, like the middle of the array or something. Uh, obviously, we don't have to worry about that, but here's where we get out and out, out our uh, p bytes written pointer. No, and we scrolled off the side of the page. Oh, let me guess, this has got to be a uint overflow. Why does it say overflow? Oh, I'm reading that wrong. No, I'm not used to 2015. But yes, count it, or uh, cast it as you went. Okay, um, then lastly, of course, the bytes written has to be populated by the pointer 2 and 32, and that's it. Um, oh, wow, I can't believe I made that mistake. Somebody probably saw that right away. We don't need to return <laughs> the bytes that we're giving in. We'll make that avoid. Um, it could be a bool, whatever you want to do, you can always make that some kind of successful or deal with your error handling, but that's it. This is the class that we need, and you can reuse this. You can put it in a library. Like I said, I'm just going to be cheap and put it in... I don't know why I made a bother making a folder for it since I'm doing it the uh, bad programmer way, but whatever. You can see uh, it's, it's pretty simple. It's a lot of like Windows DLL kernel things here, like all these DLL imports, which are not always the funnest to use, but it's all right. It's uh, this this part of the program is pretty easy. The other stuff is fun. We actually get to jump into the game and whatnot. So on the next part, I'll probably show a little bit on how to find the addresses you need to look up um, in the game. The uh, I don't even have the game open. What am I doing? Uh, the game. It doesn't matter what you're programming with. There's two easy ways to do it. There's going to be accessing memory like directly you'll just have an, an address um, but the game I'm using is Final Fantasy X 2 and it's on the PC so modern games the memory is always in a different place so we're going to figure out how to read the correct memory address um, using pointers but uh, that'll be in the next section so stay tuned